Hello, Sean Paul here with Morningstar Aquaponics. The video you're about to watch is a system that I built in El Plan Honduras. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the complete process that I went through to build this system. Now, obviously, for time purposes, I cannot go into great detail. So, on my website at MorningstarAquaponics.com, I make it available for you to download an ebook that I produced. And this ebook not only teaches you how to build this IBC tote system, but it also teaches you how to build a half barrel system as well. Also, we show you how to build a greenhouse and a black soldier fly box. This ebook is over 88 pages, step by step instructions with over 300 photos for your reference. We provide schematic drawings on various components and a complete supply list and what tools are required to build the system. Over two hours of instructional videos that actually walk you through the process. This ebook will save you time and money and help you prevent any mistakes of building your system. Are you ready? Let's go. First and foremost, you have to make sure that you purchase the right IBC totes and barrels for your system. It's very important that you methodically think where you're going to place your system in your backyard. You need to measure and stake it out before actually start digging and placing the system. Here we are digging a hole for the sump pit and we're going to measure everything off that sump pit. Now it's time to start marking out the IBC toads as to where you're going to cut the actual cage itself. We use bolt cutters to cut the cage. I know some use other tools as well, like grinders or sawzalls. After the cages are cut, it's time to start marking out the plastic containers themselves. We use straight edges and black magic markers. This is very important because obviously you want an actual straight edge. You don't want to just cut something, but you want your grow beds to look very professional. We use a sawzall to cut the actual plastic container itself. Make sure your blade is very sharp and new because if not, you will not get a good clean cut. As you can see, we are now cutting the tops of the fish tanks. Here we're cutting the biofilter and the swirl filter, or some would call it a solids collector. It's very important that you clean out the barrels and grow beds and fish tanks. We are painting them. Many ask, why are you painting them? You want to protect the plastic from UV rays, and also if sun is shining through the plastic, it will have the propensity to grow algae, and you want to prevent this as much as possible. Many will make their frames out of concrete blocks or wood. We use angle iron to build our frames to set our IBC totes on. This just makes it a lot simpler and a cleaner process. It's time to layer everything out according to the sump pit. We use a string and measure off that string to make sure that everything is square and in proper place. Once in place, we mark all the legs out on the actual framework. This gives us a place to start digging the holes so we can actually place the system down into the ground. And then what we do is we concrete all the holes in place. This is very, very important because you do not want your system to settle or sink. It's extremely important that the framework is completely level.
Here, I am sealing the bottoms of the grow beds. These are the caps that was on top of the IBC tote. Now it's time to start placing the grow beds onto the rack system. Here we're kind of cleaning up some of the sharp edges of the framework. We put all the bottoms on one side and all the tops on another side. Now we're setting the fish tanks in place. As you can see, it's starting to take shape. This is going to be a really beautiful system. Now it's time to start placing the plumbing in place. It's important that you measure and ensure that all your plumbing is in line. Because if it's not, it's not going to be very easy to plumb in the bottom of the grow beds. Again, remember all these measurements and the schematics will be in the ebook that you can download today. After you mark everything out, now you're ready to start drilling holes for the plumbing. In the ebook, I will tell you where you can buy all the bulkhead connectors. This is a bulkhead connector I'm putting in place. Now it's time to start putting some PVC pipe in. As you can tell, we're making the PVC connections below through the bulkhead connectors. This is a standpipe that I'm showing you here. Obviously, further connections down below to tie all the plumbing in together. It's very important that you measure this properly and cut it properly. As you can see, the plumbing has been plumbed below the actual grow beds. This is a four inch sleeve that I put over the standpipe to ensure that no debris will be in the standpipe area. Now we are plumbing the inlet water into the grow beds. I put valves on all my grow beds. This is ensure that you can control the flow of the water evenly throughout the grow beds. Now we are drilling a hole in the side of the biofilter. This is where the water will flow from into the grow beds. Within my ebook, I show all the schematics of the biofilter and solids collector. It's very important that this is set up properly. If it's not set up properly, it will not work properly. So again, you can reference to this in the ebook. Here we're making the connection between the two barrels. And now we're plumbing all the grow beds into the actual biofilter. I know for some of you, you may feel like this is complicated. It is not complicated at all. Like I said, with the ebook, you can follow step by step on how to build this system. It will be very simple to do. Here we are plumbing the backside of the solids collector and tying that into the actual fish tanks. The size of all these connections and pipes will be referenced in the ebook as well.
It's very important that these valves on these IPC totes are the same so you can tie them in properly. And now we're further connecting the drainage of the grow beds into the sump pit. Here I'm making measurements of where to cut the actual hole into the top of the sump pit. This apparatus that I'm making is an inlet into the sump pit. I purposely make this with perforated holes for a reason. It helps break the water and oxygenate the water as well for the fish. Here is a quick photo of a drainage that I'm putting at the bottom of the solids collector. That is referenced in our ebook as well on how to do that. It's very important that you drain off the solids on a weekly basis to ensure that there's no solids build up into the grow beds. Now it's time to put your media into the grow beds. There's many different types of media that we talk about, but here in Honduras, river rock is really what is readily available. It's very important that you test your river rock because you do not want any type of river rock to drive up your pH, like limestone will drive up your pH in your system. Now I'm preparing the inside of the fish tank. This apparatus that I'm building right here is a apparatus so the little fry, baby fish, can actually escape and get away from the larger fish that would eat them. Also, I am building a drain tube here so that the baby fry does not slip through the hole as easily. Now we are building the spray bar that goes on top of the fish tanks. It's very important that you build a spray bar, not just dump water into the fish tanks. This helps aerate the water for your fish. You can never have enough oxygen for your fish. Now we're drilling a hole for the water line down into the pump. In the ebook, I give reference to where I buy my pumps at. This is a duckweed grow bed that we're building. Some people like to use duckweed uh, to supplement their fish food. And we built one for this system here. That's a standpipe that I am creating inside the duckweed grow bed. That's an inlet of water. This is a continuation of building the inlet into the fish tanks. Now you can see that we're starting to fill up the system with water. It's very important that as the system is filling up that you inspect for leaks. You want to deal with leaks as soon as possible. Here I am adjusting the water flow into all the grow beds to ensure that we have a consistent flow of water into all the grow beds consistently and evenly. As you can see, the system is working quite well. And now it's time to put the fish into the system. There you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helps you see the process of building your very own aquaponic system. Like I said, a lot of times it seems complicated, but again, it really is not as long as you have the right information. If you don't have the right information, yes, it can be very complicated and time consuming in trying to figure it out. That's why we made our ebook. Our ebook you can download today, and literally today you can start building your system. We will walk you through the complete entire process.